you did the eyes and everything? Yeah, I made it. Oh, shit. You made the eye? Yeah, out of flour. I didn't know you made the eye. Yeah. Okay, what the no, I made it. Oh, that's even cooler. Mm -hmm. Let me see. That's what I meant. <laughs> Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get creative, how you can be resourceful, and create these Halloween looks using products that you can find in your home. So some things that you're going to be needing for this video is flour, some twine or yarn. If you have run yarn, that'd be awesome, but if you don't, I'll show you what you can do if you don't. You're also going to need some red paint if you don't have red yarn. And you just have regular colored yarn and some nail polish, clear nail polish. You're also going to need a bit of water. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to grab some flour and put a little bit in a bowl. Now, I don't know exact measurements. Literally, I'm just eyeballing, but it looks like about a third of a cup. After you put in a little bit of flour, I added some cornstarch because, I don't know, I thought it would make it whiter. You probably don't need this, so you can skip this step. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to my mix and just start kneading my dough. If you've ever worked with flour and dough, um, you kind of just add water until it's the right consistency. consistency. You don't want it to be too dry or else it cracks and you don't want it to be too wet or else it won't mold. So you just have to find that sweet spot. It just brought me back to the days where me and my little sister used to make things out of clay for like our parents for Mother's Day and Father's Day for gifts. And so I thought about it. I was like, I want to. I really want to do an eyeball look, but like, I don't want to go buy an eyeball. So I was like, you know what? Let me see what I got up in this pantry that I could whip up together and make some shake. And this worked out pretty well. So here I am. I'm just adding a little bit more water because you can see it's really sticky and dry. No, it's really dry, not sticky. So I'm adding more water and just working that dough until it's to my perfect consistency. And once I get it to where I kind of can mold it around, I put it, take it out, put it on my cutting board, add some flour on the cutting board, make sure you're adding flour so nothing sticks anywhere. And I'm just rolling it into a ball. At this point, I'm just kind of like playing around because I don't know, just for me, playing with dough is just so nostalgic and it's just so relaxing to me. And here I am being a perfectionist, making sure it's a perfect ball, which honestly, it really doesn't matter as long as it kind of looks like a ball because so much stuff is going to be added to it. So I have this little container that I, <laughs> I stole from a restaurant that, that has like dipping sauce in it. But if you have any small round container, you could put it in. Put it in that and I'm just going to bake it on 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Make sure, please, you are watching it and eyeing it because if you overcook it, it'll crack and it'll burn and it'll turn like a tan color and then you're just going to have to paint over it. So to avoid all that, you want to bake it for just the right amount of time. So next, we're moving on to the twine. This is the most time consuming and messiest part of it all. If you have red twine and you can get red twine for the cheap, go ahead and do that. But this is just some of the stuff I had laying around in my um, my DIY box. This is part of a costume that I made last year. I was Avatar, it was part of my necklace. So I was like, you know what, I'm never gonna use this again. So let me just break it up and make something else out of it because we're being resourceful. We're recycling, okay? We're not wasting, saving the environment. What I'm doing here is breaking up the twine into smaller pieces. And so I'm just breaking it up into smaller pieces so they're as thin as twine or yarn. You want them to be really thin because when you have, we're going to use this for the blood vessels in the eye. You don't have thick blood vessels in your eye so you want to make sure they're very thin and varying sizes it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm just cutting them to about four inches just to be safe I don't know how long or how short I need it to be so I did longer more is better so 
I cut them up into four inch pieces and I just continue separating it until I have a desired stack. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate pieces. So I'm gonna have my anchored pieces. They're kind of thicker, sturdier pieces that I can use in the middle of the eye. And then I'll have my frayed pieces that are gonna be used on the perimeter of my eyeball to use as blood vessels. Now I separated it just to make it a little bit easier when I'm assembling my eyeball and when I'm painting them or covering them in paint. So for the anchored pieces, the ones that are sturdy, they're kind of together, you don't see any frayed pieces. I dip them straight into the paint, rub it down, and move on to the next, right? Once that's done, I set that aside and I let that dry. Then I moved on to my frayed pieces. Now my frayed pieces, I did a little differently just because the way I want to add it to the eyeball, it was going to be a little different. So I poured the paint onto the piece of paper, any paper or whatever you got laying around, just use it. That's my philosophy, like do it yourself, figure it out, get creative because it's just fun, I feel like. So I take the frayed pieces and I fray them up a little bit more. Right, I separate it a little bit more just to my liking. I want them to be thin. Like I want to have some thin ones, some thicker ones. You want it to be, you don't want it to be perfect because no eyeball is the same and no eyeball is perfect. So I'm just like breaking away frayed pieces until I like it. And when I dip it into the paint, what I do is I kind of fray up the ends a little bit more with the paint because if you just dip it in the paint, all the frayed pieces are just gonna stick together. So at the end, you just wanna make sure that you're taking your two fingers and pulling it apart. You have a whole bunch of frayed pieces and they're all covered. Because like I said, if you just dip it in there, it sticks together and it just makes one solid piece. And I'm using acrylic paint, so it will dry hard. And here is my eyeball, fresh out the oven, nice and hot. She got little crackles in it, but that's okay as character okay so let's move on to the eyeball and your girl listen i'm so mad it fucking rolled over oops sorry it rolls over into the red paint so now i have to bring in the reinforcements and um we're just gonna go ahead and get started painting the eyeball for this next step you can skip it honestly if you didn't dip it in red paint like i did and just um go straight to painting your iris but since i made a boo-boo i'm just gonna cover it in some white paint until it's to my liking, yeah. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint on like a pencil paintbrush and start making my iris. I found instead of trying to freehand the damn circle, hold the paintbrush in one spot and twist it. It makes it easier. Like I said, this does not have to be perfect. Most people won't even notice or see it, so for me, I am just annoying and I like things to be nice and perfect, so I took the time to make sure it was as close to perfect as possible. So we're gonna outline with black. And once you are happy with your black circle, we're gonna go in with some brown paint. So whatever eye color eyeball, you go in with this color next. And I'm just putting a nice thick layer making sure the color is even all around and nice and pretty. And once that dries a little bit, I take the paintbrush and I start from the perimeter to the center. And I do strokes like that to make it textured. And I use a lot of paint on the brush. I'm not making sure, I'm not making sure that it's even because in your eyeballs you have those like depths and those shadows. So instead of going in with more paint to add the shadows, I just made sure I had a lot of paint on there and I was applying pressure so that you could see some of the black through and some of the brown paint was like spilling over creating that depth. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But you can kind of see it here. You see the print of my paintbrush in that order, okay? Now I'm going in with some black paint again to make it my pupil. And voila, we have an eye.
<laughs> Next, I'm gonna take some, listen, this part was pissing me off because I watched a video and they said use clear nail polish. Well, that shit don't work, so. Eventually, I just ended up using eyelash glue and then covering it with clear nail polish. I found that worked a whole lot better because with the clear nail polish, it was just slipping and moving and just whatever adhesive you have, use the adhesive, not clear nail polish. Now, I just took my hot glue gun because these are my anchor points. I want it to be strong. I don't want it to move anywhere. You could use your eyelash glue. It would stay, but I just wanted to be safe and sorry. So I brought out my hot glue gun and I started anchoring those pieces that I called the anchors to the bottom. And some of them I frayed up the sides or I separated it in two and kind of like glued the two sides parallel or opposite of each other, creating like a line and then the, the, the yarn was coming out the middle just because I felt like that would have been sturdier and held it better instead of just like sticking it on there. Just continue doing that and here I am just cleaning up. And once you're happy with that and you have a nice full fleshy or blood vessel filled eyeball, you're gonna cover it with some clear nut polish and let it dry upside down, upside down. This is important because all the nail polish will kind of pull at the bottom your iris so adding more depth and making it look a little bit more realistic okay so i literally just wrapped a, a cami shirt around it and put it in my bathroom and let that thing hang for a little bit it really didn't take long probably like 15 20 minutes depending on your nail polish of course so here we are here's my eyeball you see that reflection baby Yes, that's that clear nail polish pulling. Looks so good. All right. Once you have your eyeball and you're ready to roll, I did add, um, I did do a light coat of foundation, just kind of like my basic foundation routine, just to look polished and, you know, together <laughs> in my eyebrows as well. And I'm just setting that in place and we're, you know, we're ready to get started. I'm excited. All right, so I'm just gonna take the iris now and cut it to length to where I like it. Um, wherever you want it to drop low, you could drop it low to where you want it to go, bars. <laughs> and cutting it to my length, to my face, everybody's different, like I said, so make it work, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm just taking a piece of paper no, not a piece of paper, a paper towel. And I'm folding that in half. You wanna make sure you fold it in half. You could even fold it in fours, okay? The thicker, the better. You can also use a cotton pad. That'd be a little easier. You can kind of skip this step. But I'm just cutting it into the shape around my eye. I'm cutting it at least a couple inches away from my eye because we're putting products and you don't want it to get in your eye, obviously. So just make sure you leave enough room for that. Then I'm taking some liquid latex. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna use a Q-tip and apply that around my eye, the shape of the paper towel. Or even beyond, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? This look is all about the gore, the nastiness, so it, it don't matter if it's a little messy. It's cool. So I'm just gonna apply that around my eye and then I'm taking my paper towel and just placing it on there. And I'm just adding another layer of liquid latex and securing that second layer. And then I add another layer on top just for more security because if you wanna wear this look out, I mean, I just did this look to take a picture and make a video for you guys, but if you wanna wear this look out, I wanted to make sure it was wearable. So I definitely did wear it for a couple hours and trust me, it wasn't moving nowhere. <laughs> So just make sure the more latex, the more secure it is. Then I'm gonna take some black eyeshadow and of course, 
<laughs> back fumbled anyways I'm gonna take some black eyeshadow and apply that to my lid realize it wasn't working because I'm using a paper towel and it's textured so if you have that problem like me just take a little bit of black paint and apply that now you could use the black eyeshadow it'll just take way longer to get it as dark as as the paint would be but you could definitely use black eyeshadow or if you have like I don't know black primer paints I don't know you could use that too whatever you got just make it work you know what I'm saying get creative now I'm going back into my latex and I'm dipping the ends of my eyeball blood vessels into it and applying it to my eye now one thing I will say about this part is if you do just a double layer of the paper towel it'll feel like it's seeping through but I promise it's not it's just sitting and the fumes kind of get in your eye which is what happened to me but that's why I would recommend just doing four layers or using the cotton pad underneath and I'm just going over it on top of it with more liquid latex because you know security now this liquid latex now this liquid latex ain't going nowhere it ain't gonna budge it's not gonna move it's literally like look as it's drying it's sticking it's so elastic once it dries it's crazy it's not, really not gonna go anywhere so you're good so I'm just testing it out I'm really making sure and I'm fixing anywhere that I see is peeling that I didn't add enough liquid latex now I'd let a piece of latex dry overnight in a little like dish that I had or a little plate it really doesn't matter and now I'm just cutting it to size on my eye now I did fold over the lip so that the end that's close to the eyeball is thick like your eyelid and I'm I'm showing it here I just folded it over I'm not doing a great job but sure I'm so sorry guys listen filming and doing special effects is real hard but I'm, I'm trying my best to explain it I just folded it over I took it put my fingers in between the middle and folded it over. And that fold part is gonna be facing your eyeball. That's your eyelid. The flatter, skinnier part is gonna be against your skin. It helps blend your skin better. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, drop your questions below and I'll answer it for you, you know what I'm saying? Now we're going back in with black paint to cover all that area. And I'm just gonna drag it down also down the blood vessels wherever that liquid latex is you want to add it because it's going to dry white so rule of thumb then because you know they don't appreciate us brown skin folk i had to go in over the liquid latex and match my complexion so i'm just taking my concealer that i use in the center of my eye which is the la girl pro concealer in fawn i believe and i'm just putting that all over it and I'm setting it with a little bit of Sasha setting powder. Just my basic stuff that I use. And then I go over everything with blood. And I use gel blood so that it looks scabby and really gross. And honestly, you could put the blood everywhere. Cover everything. You could do it everywhere. Honestly, your eye is coming out your eye. The more blood, the better. I'm dragging it down the eyeball. I'm just making it real bloody because this is not a pretty scene. Not a pretty scene at all. And I'm literally just covering it and there we have it. It's really so simple, honestly, once you get past the making of the eyeball. <laughs> so this is the final look. <laughs> Cool. I'm so excited. My heart fucking dropped.